Well, John talked about Syria there. In that country, battle still rages. Today, the UN Security Council condemned the Assad regime's use of force against civilians for the first time since protests began five months ago. Reports from the city of Hama say it's been under attack since Sunday, with army tanks occupying a central square there. Jim Muir sent this report from neighboring Lebanon. There was shelling, machine gun fire and panic as the tanks moved in. Activist videos on the internet said there were even gunmen on rooftops to keep people off the... The tanks seemed to meet little resistance as they ground into the city center. Residents said the attack was unprovoked. Today at the morning, about 5 uh, a.m., the all ways of communication, land uh, landlines, uh, cell uh, phones, internet uh, have been dropped completely, and we start to listen a uh, big uh, fire shots and bomb and tanks missiles in all uh, directions of the city. The action seems to have put the government back in control of Hama. It's 700,000 or so people seem to be more or less solidly behind the uprising. Even before the final assault, Hama was already burying its dead. Nobody knows how many died today, but last time a revolt was crushed there, 1982, it was many thousands. Jim York, BBC News, Beirut. And for more on the condemnation issued at the United Nations today against Syria, I spoke with the British ambassador to the UN, Sir Mark Lyle Grant. I asked him what the impact on the Assad regime will be. Well, I think we'll need to see. Um, what is important is today the Security Council issued a very united and clear condemnation of the violence by the Syrian authorities against its own people. It called for an end to the violence. It called for respect for human rights and it called for an inclusive political process to begin. Now, that is a very clear signal from the international community. How the Syrian regime reacts, of course, we don't know. Um, but I think it is really important that the Syrian regime looks at this statement, looks at the unanimity with which it has adopted, and the countries that sit on the Security Council who did adopt it, and draw lessons from that. Well, there's two points there. Uh, how the Syrian regime reacts obviously is crucial. But why has it taken so long for the UN to act when on Libya the international community seemed to come together much more forcefully and much more quickly? Well, as your listeners will know, um, the European members of the Security Council put down a draft resolution two months ago to, to address the situation in Syria. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of different views to reach uh, unanimity on a text at that time. I think it was following the particularly barbarous acts at the weekend um, by the Syrian regime in Hama that you referred to earlier in your program uh, that all members of the security recognized that the Security Council had to now take action. And that's where we ended up with the statement we've got today. What's the reaction that you're hoping it's going to prompt? Well, what we're hoping is that there will be a fundamental shift of approach by the Syrian regime, that they will begin to listen to the, their own population, who are clearly clamoring for a peaceful change in Syria, and that they will stop immediately the violence perpetrated by them against the civilian population, uh, like Homs and Hama, that they will withdraw their security forces uh, from that, allow people to collect uh, peacefully and to demonstrate peacefully and to live up to some of the commitments that the regime has said. We've heard many announcements about reform, about dialogue, but nothing has been followed through and we expect that now to change and change dramatically. Okay, so Mark Lyle Grant from the UN, thank you very much indeed for joining us, the British Ambassador there. In other news, the famine in Somalia has spread